you're seeing on your screens which is in the green mild green actually 17900 on the nifty we went to levels of 18030 but in the last 20 minutes you've seen some amount of profit booking coming through the nifty which is of course uh, in the green yet but has fallen from the top the index is uh, i think uh, up about what 90 points 100 points it's been positive but it's been very volatile. Uh, so what did well is oil and gas. The index was up about one and a quarter percent. FMCG stood out with one and a quarter percent gains. Real estate and uh, I think the IT services index was up about one percent or so. All in all, I mean, a pretty good day. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18. You're watching Markets Today, the show where we track about six hours of the day's trading action in five headlines. I am Reema Tendulkar and these are the headlines for the day. A last hour surge helps Indian indices close near the day's high. Sensex gains over 500 points. The Nifty reclaims 18,000. Mid caps and bank stocks underperform. Oil producers and refiners perk up in trade as the government trims windfall taxes again on crude oil, diesel and aviation turbine fuel. The levy on petrol stays at nil. No slowdown in weapons or wine. Hindustan Aeronautics tells CNBC TV 18 it is looking at a big swell of orders in the next six months. Sula Vineyard is upbeat on its big crop for this season. Zeeman signs a 26,000 crore rupee contract with Indian Railways to supply and service electric locomotives for freight movement. Railway service providers tell CNBC TV 18 that industry players will continue to see a slew of orders. Kesaram industry slumps after losses widen in the third quarter. The management tells CNBC TV 18 the company is not on the block even as it stresses that refinancing by Q1 FI24 is key. Meanwhile, Bank of India slides after third quarter saw write-offs rise and an overweight rating from Morgan Stanley gives Tata Chemicals a fillip. And here's a lineup of what we have for you in store today. It's a power pack show and market opinion. Rahul Arora, CEO of Nirmal Bang Institutional Equities. And in big corporate voices, we have CB Anantakrishnan, CMD of Hindustan Aeronautics. <clears throat> Straight to the day's trading action then. A last star surge helped the Lal Street end near the day's high. The Nifty and the Sensex gained about a percentage eat with heavyweights like Reliant, ICICI Bank, HDFC Twins seeing a sharp move higher in the last hour. Midcaps relatively underperformed the benchmarks. Prashant is here with the details. We've been complaining about the fact that the market and the Nifty at least has been stuck in a range for a while. And today, perhaps there is a glimmer of hope. There was a break and break higher. Uh, the question is, will this last? But in any case, it was a good close for the index. And bulk of the gains came through in the last 45 odd minutes of trade. Banks underperformed. I mean, uh, the bank index was only up about a quarter percent or so. Pockets of gains largely came through from the energy pack. Reliance is, of course, uh, the one to thank. FMCG, real estate and IT services are other sectors which did well. PSU Banks, which was the big winner yesterday in a down market, actually underperformed and was down sharply in an up market today. So a bit of flip-flop uh, coming in there. Uh, large cap stocks, as I said, Reliance, of course, uh, closed at the day's high. There was LNT, which was looking strong. HUL, out of the blue, uh, came out and participated propping up the FMCG space. Banks, I mean, actually HDFC Bank and HDFC primarily in the large cap space. And the IT services names are starting to come up a little bit. Like yesterday, HCL Tech and TCS stood out amongst large cap IT services. Uh, you know, advanced decline flipped between uh, being positive and negative. And by close, I think it was largely even. Uh, but uh, the losses coming through in names like Bank of India, the new age companies, Zomato, Nika, Paytm, all lost. Financials was a pocket of losses apart from the PSU bank space. Manapuram, PNB Housing, South Indian Bank uh, were some of the names which uh, saw cuts. There were gainers as well in names like IIFL, NHPC, Minda Cop was looking very strong, Specialty, Loda Developers and something like a Spencer's which was up almost about 15% or so. With today's uh, sort of move higher, the Nifty is reclaimed the very near term 20 day moving average which is watched very closely. U.S. markets will open after a day of holiday yesterday. And I think all of that will be important when we come back uh, to start trade once again tomorrow morning. Back to you. Prashant, thank you very much for that. In market opinion, Rahul Arora, CEO at Nirmal Bang Institutional Equity, says infra and cement stocks could benefit from the budget. Adds that new age companies are price attractive. Listen in. I think uh, from a portfolio standpoint, if you're playing it off the budget, I'd say infrastructure. 
uh, right? I think you guys were highlighting Ashoka Buildcon. I think I could add a PNC Infra or KNR construction uh, where the balance sheets are very good. Uh, the order book to build ratios are about three, three and a half. Uh, as a second order beneficiary, cement, which will probably be our biggest overweight sector this year. Uh, you could look to play it through names like Ultratech in the large cap and uh, you know down the market cap, something like a JK Cement. There's a marked shift in the kind of companies that are coming out with their IPOs. I think you've moved from loss making to profit making and people have moved away from talking about price to sales to back to return on equity and capital employed and price to earnings. In that trade-off, when liquidity is withdrawing, I think these guys will find it a little difficult to make a push. Uh, but let me reiterate, I think if these guys are able to demonstrate a road to profitability and cash flows, it's not necessary that they have to report it in the this year or the next year. But if the burn is, is coming down and the market visibly sees that, I think they'll be rewarded. I think the prices are very, very attractive right now in all of these new, new generation companies. They just have to go back to the basics on focusing on cash flows and talking about return ratios. And I think the market will probably, they want to give them the benefit of doubt. They just want to see a little bit of delivery before they do. Moving on now to macro opinion, Ed Yardini, president of Yardini Research, believes that the economy will do well and is quite resilient. Listen in. Minority of uh, economists and uh, strategists who don't think we're going to have a recession uh, this year after all. The economy is going to do quite, quite well. I think it's very resilient. Let's also get you some expert opinion from Jonathan Garner, Morgan Stanley, who said that China could possibly drive 50 percent of the global growth and is big enough to change the global environment. Garner told CNBC that emerging markets are outperforming developed markets after a long time. China is the world's second largest economy. It's just completely reset its own policy dials. Um, in a, the environment that we're anticipating, it'll probably drive as much as 50% of all global growth, having driven probably only around 5% of global growth last year. That's big enough to actually generate a meaningful upside revenue surprise for Europe, which has a lot of revenue sensitivity. And again, that's one of the reasons the European market is outperforming the US. So China is quite big enough to change the whole global environment. There's at least another 10% plus upside to our current base case target for EM. And EM is outperforming DM in aggregate for the first time in a long time. To the second headline now, the government has trimmed the windfall taxes again on crude oil, diesel and aviation turbine fuel. However, it has left the levy on petrol at nil. Tim C. Jaipuria is here with more on the story. Well, that's right. Government has yet again decided to cut the levies, which will be with effect from 17th of Jan under the windfall gains tax uh, regime. And this time again, the trend of a decline has been seen in the last fortnightly movement of global crude oil prices, which has led to these cuts. The new levies are uh, on crude. The, uh, the, there has been a cut from 2100 rupees per ton to 1900 rupees per ton. On diesel, the levies have been reduced from 6.50 rupees per litre to 5 rupees per litre. On ATF, the reduction is from 4.5 rupees per litre to 3.5 rupees per litre. And on petrol, the levies will continue to remain nil for the next fortnight, starting from 17th of Jan. It is understood that this revision will keep on continuing depending upon the movement on uh, global crude oil, oil prices and noting that there's major volatility happening towards the downside, there could be further reduction in the next fortnight, depending upon the movement. Back to you. Timsi, thank you very much for that. The third headline for the day, Hindustan Aeronautics was in the spotlight as the government increasingly looks to domestic companies to fulfill requirements of the armed forces. We caught up with CB Anantakrishnan, Chairman, Managing Director, and he says while the current order book for the company stands at 84,000 crore rupees, more inquiries are pouring in from other countries as well. Listen in. As of now, the order book is uh, standing at a healthy around 84,000 crores and we expect another 6,000 crores from the SGT 40 for which the order has already been concluded, only the documentation part is pending. The inquiries have increased, the leads which are coming from the other countries have also increased. There are a lot of countries which are now showing interest on HAL product. As far as the Argentina is concerned, we are in discussions with them for the helicopters. Uh, we expect that orders uh, should come through. Another stock in news today was Sula Vineyards. It gained for the second straight day after reporting record quarterly sales. We were earlier joined by the MD and CEO Rajiv Samant and he said the company plans to put cash back into the business and grow in tier two cities. Listen in. 
So I think already we've seen significant growth, as you've pointed up, 70% gross margin. At this point, I must say that it's not necessarily a priority, the top priority for the company to improve it further. Because at 70% gross margin, we're throwing out cash. We're in a very comfortable position. We now want to plow that cash back into growing the business, into penetrating wine into tier two cities. Until now, wine has been very much a metro game, a few tier one cities. We want to take this uh, magical uh, liquid, what we call it, um, out to tier two India, and we want to spend money in penetrating that market for growth to come two or three years down the head. I think I'm very comfortable with a 70% gross margin at this point. Moving on, SEBI has released a consultation paper on blocking funds for trading in the secondary market. This move is aimed at safeguarding investors' money from misuse and default by stockbrokers. Yash is here with the fine print on the paper. Yash? Well, uh, this ASBA-like model or uh, what do you call it, application supported by blocked amount-like model for secondary market is certainly a step closer to reality now. What SEBI has said today is that uh, for secondary market uh, where transactions are concerned, uh, the amount could be blocked in the client or the trading member's account itself and it does not have to be transferred to the broker as far as that margin amount is concerned. Uh, now, as far as under the proposed fund, uh, the, the proposal is concerned, the funds remain in the client's account, but they will be blocked in favor of the clearing corporation and not the stockbroker. In case of any transaction being executed also, the settlement will happen directly from the client's uh, bank account to the clearing corporation, removing the role of the broker in this entire transaction chain. We've been speaking to a lot of industry uh, uh, players, uh, large brokers on what this could mean for the industry. Uh, the feedback that uh, that seems to be coming at this point of time is quite positive. They say that the ASBA-like model in the secondary market will remove systemic vulnerabilities. What are these systemic vulnerabilities? Essentially, misuse of funds when they're kept with broker as far as margin amount is concerned. Also, it removes the risk uh, of, uh, you know, the client, uh, for the client if the broker goes bankrupt under any condition. Also, blocking funds in the secondary market could fasten the process to T plus one settlement as the role of uh, the stockbroker would go out and it would be a pain and payout between the client as well as the clearing corporation. Finally, blocking funds in client account will also help the client uh, earn interest on that money which is lying in his own account. Thank you very much for that. Get into a break, but stay tuned. We'll be back in a jiffy with the other headlines.